December 3rd. Welcome to another very exciting advent calendar video. Today we're going to have a look at UI scroll view and I'm going to show you now what application we're going to create. So let's close the advent app here and bring up our scroll view application and what we are going to implement today is again kind of a feature view where we will use the knowledge from yesterday where we have created UI views, custom UI views using zip files and today we're using such zip file or one zip file to implement something like this. So we have a scroll view here. We can skip through different features of our application. Each one has a purchase button. And we also have this nice little page control that tells us on which page we actually are at the moment. And to be able to mainly focus on the scroll view, I've created a starter project, which you can download in the video description below. You will also find the link to the video from yesterday, where we are going to explain in detail what and how you can use zip files and how you can use them together with UI view. So just to give you a quick impression of we what of what we have here, we have our main storyboard, which is currently empty. We will add a scroll view to that in a second. We have a feature zip file that already includes a feature view where I have added um, some labels, a purchase button, an image view, and also some constraints to position all of these items correctly. And I've also created a custom class for our feature view with some outlets. They are connected to the corresponding component here in our zip file. So we have a title label, we have a price label, a purchase button, and a feature image view. This is all I've done so far. And now we can just jump right into the view controller and um, or actually the view controller in our storyboard. And what we will do now first is search for scroll view in our object library. And we can then drag our scroll view to our window. And let's say it's going to get a, a height of 250 pixels. And we have to reposition that again and increase the size a little. And then we will set the auto resizing mask so that it is pinned to the left, to the bottom and to the right. And we let it stretch in width so that it has always the correct position and the correct size, of course. Well, and since we're talking about the size at the moment, this is actually the scroll views frame. It's currently 375 pixels by 250 pixels. This is the visible area of the scroll view. But the scroll view also has a content size, which describes how much content actually fits into our scroll view. So we have two things. We have the real size, the frame, and we have the content size then that we have to increase if we are putting things into it. So actually our content size is when we are putting three of those views into our scroll view, three times the screen size of our device. This is the actual content size and the height all or actually the width and the height always stays the same in our case. And to be able to work with our scroll view. In code, we have to connect it to our view controller class. So I'm bringing up the assistant editor, press control on the keyboard, and I create an outlet for my scroll view in the view controller. Let's call it feature scroll view, hit return. And there we go. We have our nice little scroll view right here. And before I forget to mention it, I've also added some images that we can use for this project. And we also need kind of a data model, which we will keep very simple. Now we have three features. Each feature has a title, a price and an image. So we're creating a dictionary or dictionaries for that. Let's start with feature one. We have a dictionary here with a key title and the title is going to be Apple Watch. We have another key, which is price. Let's set this to um, 99 cents. Um, with the currency here. And we have the image name, which is simply one in my case. And then we can copy this line, paste it two times, and then rename our features 
properly. And this is, of course, just a demo model. You would get the information, for example, from a plist and then put them from there into a dictionary and work with that in a little different way. But nevertheless, this will do for our intentions today. And I will rename this title for feature two to more designs. The price is a little more expensive here, 199. And this uses image two, this uses image three. Um, notifications are also pretty cheap here, just 99 cents, so notifications. And this would obviously be kind of in-app purchases um, that are optional to your application. And what we will also need um, is a feature array. And we're going to put a, our dictionaries right into our feature array and this is going to be a dictionary of string keys and string values and then we will just initialize that here and we have our three feature constants we have our feature array variable and now in viewed at load we will simply put all of our features into our feature array so feature array equals an array with feature one feature two and feature three. And it definitely makes sense to put all of them in an array so that we can iterate through each of those elements and create an own feature view for every feature automatically. But before we continue to that, let's first of all configure our feature scroll view. And what we can do here is first of all, use the feature scroll view and enable paging. So we set the is paging enabled property to true. And what this does is it gives you this effect of multiple pages and it's not just a continuous scrolling experience. So this is what we do when we enable paging right here. And then we should also set the content size. So let's use our feature scroll view again and set the content size. This is a CG size object that we have to provide here. So we say CG size with a width of self that view bounds frame dot width and we have to multiply that with the number of elements in our array so let's use the feature array and count all of the elements and since this is a width we have to provide not an integer but a cg float so let's cast that really quickly here and the height will be constant at 250 pixels so this is the content size we also talked about earlier. Now, what we also should deactivate is the scroll bar or the horizontal scroll indicator. And therefore we use shows horizontal scroll indicator. We do not need to see that. So we set this to false. And with that, we have actually created or added all of the properties that we need for our feature scroll view and we can now start and load the features and let's therefore write a new function let's call it load features and let's also call that function right here in view load so that we don't forget that and now the cool thing is that we can iterate through our array with a for in loop so we use for feature in feature array and with that we can iterate through each of our dictionaries and provide our um, feature view with the proper information but since we also need an index later for example to identify um, which image we want to use and also for the purchase button which uh, item we actually want to purchase we should also have an index and we can simply add an index variable here to our for in loop but what we have to do here then is calling the enumerate function, which gives us pairs of index and a feature of our feature array. So let's call that enumerated function right here. And then we can start creating our feature view. So let me give you a constant here, which is called feature view. And then we're using just as yesterday, the bundle main, and we load a nip named in our case feature with the owner self and no options. So let's set this to nil. And doing this gives us only an array of elements that are possibly in our zip file. Since we only have one element, we can use the first and then cast that to a feature view object. And just to remember you, our feature view class has all of the properties that we're going to need to customize the, the elements in our view, like the title label and so on and so on. So it is possible that this fails. So let's put it in an if let statement to check if 
all of this works. And if it does, we have a unwrapped feature view we can work with. And the first thing we should do here is configure it properly. So let's take the feature view and maybe start with the feature image view and its image property. And we'll simply load our image named. And here we could insert both the index as a string, or we could use our feature object and access the key image right here, which also gives us the string of our image. So both things are possible here. We only need to make sure to force unwrap that here. We can do that because we definitely know that feature one or the first element should have an object or an element for the key image. So with that done, let's continue with the title label. We use the feature view title label dot text equals. We use the feature object again and access the title key. We are doing the same thing for the price label. So here we have again feature and price. All right. So now we have all the basic information added to our feature view that we need to see something. Now we can use our feature scroll view and add our feature view as a sub view. And then we can make some further adjustments like taking our feature view again, using the frame size and width property and make sure that it's the same as self view bounds size width. So the same size uh, or the same width as our device. And then we also have to position our view correctly. So this one is at the X position zero. This one is at one time our screen size. And this is at two time our screen size. So how can we do that? How can we change the frame, its origin and its X position? Well, it's actually pretty simple since we have our index variable here and we can simply take that index and multiply it with self that view that bounds that size and width. And again, since this is a CG float that is expected, we have to cast our index integer to a CG float. And we build that. And then we can run this in the simulator. And here we are. We have our first feature view, our second feature view and our third feature view. Isn't that cool already? We can now page through them thanks to our scroll view, but we can't really press on those buttons yet. And each button should actually trigger a different purchase in the background. So let's maybe create a function for that by feature. And we're going to have a sender here, which is a UI button. And then we can print something like the user wants to buy feature X. But how do we actually get to know which feature our user wants to buy? You obviously have to add some more logic to that if you are really handling an in-app purchase. But what can we do about that? Well, again, we have our index. And what we can do is use our feature view and its purchase button property and change again the tag property here. And we simply set that to the index. And then the index corresponds actually with the index of your feature array. And you could just um, make the same true for the different inner purchases that you provide. So the first one would be the Apple Watch, the second one would be more designs and so on and so on. And so we can use the tag to hand that information to our buy feature function. And now all we need to do is to make sure that our users can press the button and trigger our function. Therefore, we again use the purchase button. And then we add a target that is self for the selector. And this is the function that we just created selector in our view controller. And we want to call the buy feature function for the control event touch up inside. And with that, we have connected our button with our by feature function. And then we can replace the X here with sender dot tag. And then we can run this in the simulator. Again, see what happens. And we should get some console output. Now I press this button, we get feature zero feature one, and 
feature too, just as we expected. And the last thing we want to add to our application is actually the page control. So let's go back to our storyboard, search for the page control. And I'm going to put that somewhere here in the center, right above our scroll view. And then I'm going to adjust the tint color to something a little darker, maybe something like this. And for the current page, I take kind of a red color. And then we have to create an outlet for our page control. So I'm pressing control on the keyboard, drag it to my outlet section here, um, and just name this feature page control and hit return. And now actually what we want is that every time our scroll view comes to a stop, we want to change that page control. And how can we do that? How do we know when our scroll view actually stops? And it's actually pretty simple since there is a delegate function for that. So all we need to do is adopt the UI scroll view delegate. And then of course, in view to load, when we configure our scroll view, we should also use our feature scroll view and set its delegate to self. And then we can use the optional delegate function scroll view did scroll. And this is called every time the scroll view is actually finished scrolling. And then we just have to calculate on which page we're actually at the moment. And therefore, we use the scroll view argument and its content offset and its size. So we take the scroll view, its content offset, its current content offsets. Um, in x direction, and we simply divide it by the scroll view, its frame, its size, and its width. And this, of course, always gives us the correct page number, and we should cast it to an integer in a second. So I'm taking the feature um, page control and set the current page to the integer of our page uh, constant that we have just calculated. And with that, we're actually done. So let's run this in the simulator again and and see if it works. So we have our page control and we page through our feature list and this works really nicely. So I think there are tons of use cases for doing something like that with a scroll view and a page control. Um, be creative there. And just again, as a quick reminder, if you want to um, have a look at different states of the scroll view. There is not only scroll view did scroll, there is also scroll view uh, did begin dragging, did end decelerating. So you could check uh, many different states of the scroll view and I'm sure that one of these delegate functions is going to fit your needs depending on what you're doing with the scroll view. So thanks for watching today and I'll see you tomorrow.